Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Robin Hood or Tarzan, and like and subscribe to be on the right side of the river next time you play. Maybe. Today, we're building Rick O'Connell from the Mummy films, the ultimate destroyer of undead. He's got ways to automatically kill zombies. Wait, no, he doesn't? Well, he's got the best spells in the... Oh, no magic, no magic at all, huh? Not even like a magical weapon. Is he just like a guy? Okay, so he might not be the best at fighting mummies, but he does it a lot, and the fact that he has no business being there makes it even more impressive. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be charming. Brendan Fraser is the greatest leading man of all time. Do not at me. He is Harrison Ford. If Harrison Ford ever seemed like he was enjoying himself. Next, we need some ranged weapons. Mummies do bad things when they touch you, so we're gonna try and stay away from them. Finally, we'll just kind of be an all-arounder with a little bit of skill at everything to give everything the old college try, except college, that's for rich kids. For stats, we'll be using the standard pointer right from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch those multi-classing minimums. Dexterity will be number one. Guns are your preferred method of fighting and you tend to avoid heavy armor. Who wants to wear something that weighs 60 pounds in Egypt? Sounds like a nightmare. Charisma next. Evie might have the world history down, but you're bringing the chemistry, or I guess you both are. This cast is uh it's very attractive wisdom after that you don't need a map if you are the map follow that up with constitution i'd like it to be higher but hey you can't have everything same with strength you need dexterity for ranged weapons and ac so this one has to take the hit we're gonna dump intelligence though it might seem like you know your history but you actually just know your treasure you are part of an ancient order of arcane defenders and you didn't know that and also don't know any magic Hell yeah. Rick is a human. You might say he's dragon marked, but the magi aren't dragons, so uh, no. Grab the crossbow expert or gunner feet for your feats. I hate that I have to explain this in every video, but not every DM puts guns in their settings. I've had people on videos where I explain both feats still tell me about the gunner feet in the comments. I don't know why this has to be something that people can't let go, but I try to make these videos as DM flexible as possible. So... The only difference between these feats, other than one being for guns and one being for crossbows, is gunner gives you plus one dexterity and crossbow gives you an extra attack with your bonus action using a hand crossbow. Both let you ignore the loading penalty and fire within five feet without disadvantage. Holy moly, having to point that out every time is soul crushing. I don't know how to do it without doing that though. <sighs> Bump your dexterity and your wisdom with your two free points, take medicine for your skill of choice, and build your own background for animal handling and history proficiency. I know I said you don't know history, but you know treasure, but eh, treasure is kind of history, if that makes sense. We're gonna kick things off as a rogue. You're a bit of a rap scallion, and I want a bunch of skills like athletics, sleight of hand, persuasion, and deception to be the ultimate tour guide of ancient cursed cities made of treasure. You get expertise in two skills. I want to use these to round up some skills you should be better at, so history and persuasion will be my picks, letting you do some maximum swashbucklery later. Oh, forget I said that. Be surprised later. You get sneak attack, letting you add a d6 of extra damage when you attack a creature with advantage or have an ally within five feet of the target. Cheap shots are gonna be the only way you're gonna get the upper hand on the living death you you end up fighting so regularly. Second level rogues get cutting action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. Something I really respect about Rick as a hero is his acute awareness of how outgunned he is in most scenarios. Fleeing is always an option, and when you're fighting the bringer of seven plagues, it's probably one of the better options. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype, and I know I telegraphed Swashbuckler, but hey, I just got excited. These movies are some of my favorites. Swashbucklers get rakish audacity, letting you add your charisma modifier to your initiative roll so you can always be a little headstrong. Strong. This also lets you get your sneak attack off when you're within 5 feet of a creature without anyone else nearby, even better now that your sneak attack is dealing 2d6 extra damage, and because of the gunner or crossbow expert feat, you can do that with a ranged weapon. It's pretty fun. Fancy footwork lets you break away from enemies when you attack them with a melee weapon, meaning that they can't make opportunity attacks against you as you get the heck out of dodge, or whatever the Egyptian equivalent of dodge is. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement. We'll start with dexterity. It's probably the most important thing for you for all of the cool gun guy stuff you do. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce the damage from incoming attacks by half as a reaction as long as you can see the source of damage. Rick is the type to shrug off anything that's not from an eternal cursed monster. You can also hit that eternal cursed monster 
monster with 3d6 sneak attack damage. Bouncing over to Fighter now, if you're building an average Joe, Fighter is the way to go. Bars. It's been a minute since we had some bars. For your fighting style, Archery will add two to your attack rolls with ranged weapons. Guns are currently your best option, but we'll get some other options in a second. Speaking of seconds, Second Wind is great for tough boys since it will let them recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Here we go again. Mamma Mia. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make a second action in one turn once per short rest. If you're using this for another attack, keep in mind you can only use sneak attack once per round. I think people always assume it's just for attacks, but it can also be used for mobility. Running is good, especially when you're running from mummies. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype. Champions eventually get a second fighting style, but for now you get improved critical, letting you critically hit on a 19 or a 20. If you're going to be fighting a bunch of bad dudes above your pay grade, it can be helpful to land a critical hit. Not really a mummy lord would actually be immune to non-magical weapons. Guess you're going to have to get it done with roleplay. It's weird making a character that is pretty much ineffective in their own series. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Cap off your dexterity first. It will be important to pushing our damage up higher later against the smaller mummies at least. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action, and you can blast away thanks to the crossbow, expert, or gunner feat. Oh god, do I have to explain why I'm not using Gunslinger? It's not real. It's homebrew. Matthew Mercer's homebrew is homebrew. I don't care if he invented Dungeons and Dragons. If I use homebrew, this whole channel should just become homebrew review, which isn't something I want to do. Do you want to do that? Cool. Start that channel. Then I can say, I'm not using homebrew. They'll use that on Anime Slayer 420's channel. Obligatory. I don't hate Matthew Mercer or Critical Role. It's just homebrew. Not using that homebrew doesn't mean I don't like Matt. Please stop saying that. Anyway, six level fighters get another ability score improvement or feat. The sharpshoot feat lets you fire at max range without disadvantage. You can ignore all but full cover and subtract five from the attack roll to add 10 to the damage roll with your ranged weapons. You're a pretty in demand mercenary before you became an even more in demand apocalypse ender. We'll bounce over to Monk now. Why? For unarmed fighting, of course. You get martial arts to use your dexterity modifier with your unarmed attacks and make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make one attack with your action or make an attack with a monk weapon as your action. That's any simple melee weapon without the two-handed or heavy property or a short sword, increasing the amount of things you can use your dexterity with to be pretty good with just about every weapon you might find in an ancient tomb. You also get unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. Suspenders aren't armor, but they are cool. Oh, well, maybe only Brendan can pull those off. I don't think I could pull off suspenders. Second level monks get key points you can use to do just normal guy stuff. Step of the Wind lets you dash or disengage as a bonus action, but also doubles your jump distance. So there is technically a reason to use it if you have to clear a gap, but otherwise just use cunning action for that. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action. Mummy rot is the worst status effect. A level three mummy can be the death of a high level PC. If you don't have greater restoration, do not get hit by that. Flurry of blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action for a nice little one, two combo. You also get unarmed movement, making you fast when you keep it light. There are a lot of slowly moving crushing traps in your line of work. If you're not fast, you're going to end up entombed in the tomb you were raiding. Third level monk is what we're here for. Deflect missiles lets you reduce damage from incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your monk level and dexterity modifier as a reaction, and even throw the ammo back with a key point. In the mummy returns, Rick catches a knife. One of the bad guys throws at him. That's impressive and worthy of a monk dip in this build. For your monastic tradition, drunken masters get the performance skill, but also get the drunken technique, which lets you disengage with 10 feet of extra movement after a flurry of blows. Now when forced with the question, should I hit the thing or run away? You can answer both. Back over to Fighter now. 7th level champions are remarkable athletes, letting you add your strength modifier to the distance of a running long jump. Thankfully, you also get some things that are useful, like the ability to add half your proficiency bonus to any strength, dexterity, or constitution check you're not proficient with, including initiative rolls. You're really going to be ready to go at the drop of the hat. 8th level fighters get another ability score improvement, but I want the tough feat. For 2 HP for every level you have and every level you get. I took this over an improvement to constitution because you don't cast any spells, so constitution saves aren't going to be all that common against anything other than mummy rot. But again, you're not actually good at fighting mummies. You just happen to do it frequently. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you reroll a failed saving throw once per long rest. Again, very useful against mummy rot. Try and shrug off the melting of your skin and muscle tissue. 10th level champions get another fighting style, so we'll grab unarmed fighting to bump your unarmed attack damage to 1d6 with one hand, 1d8 with two free hands, and let you deal a d4 of damage to creatures you have grappled once per turn. With the monk levels, you can still use your dexterity modifier for your unarmed attacks. If you ever want to play a punchy character that's more lightweight, a single monk level dip is a pretty solid idea. 11th level fighters get another extra attack, letting you attack three times with your action, up to six with an action surge, and a total of eight with flurry of blows. That's some serious dad rage. I don't totally get it. Your kid is kind of annoying he's even worse as an adult 
whatever. Our capstone is the 12th level of fighter for one less ability score improvement. Bump your charisma modifier to be a little more charming and to go even faster in the initiative order. Now that we've had level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you've got really consistent damage. With unarmed attacks to deal 1d8 plus 5 per hit and 3 attacks per round, no matter what scenario you're in, you're going to put some damage out. You can also deal major damage from a distance, with Sharpshooter adding up to 60 extra damage just to your modifiers, not to mention doubled critical hit chance to get those good brain juices flowing when you get a 19 or a 20. Finally, you're a pretty durable scout, with over 150 HP and abilities to run away so that you can live long enough to run away. Bad news is, you're going to be running away a lot, because because you don't have any magical weapons. Your DM might give you a magical weapon, but I don't know that. How many times do I have to tell you I'm not your DM in this video? Anyway, if you don't have a magical weapon, you can't damage a mummy lord. Whoops. Your low intelligence also sets you up to be lacking the magical damage, and bad arcana can be rough when you're dealing with magical enemies. Finally, you can drop either of the monk levels for some more rogue levels or vice versa, giving you evasion, another ability score improvement, lots of good stuff that's better than this weird multi-class mess boy. But being a mess boy is fun as long as you're a hot mess. Turn on that swagger, catch that dagger, and shoot a gun in a way that rhymes with dagger. With enough of a can-do attitude, you can defy the odds and slay the mummy. Twice. Not three times. That last one was, well, I just don't like thinking about that last one. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Robin Hood or Tarzan and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.